Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be doing my episode 19 review, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Alright, so this is episode 19. We're very close to the end of the season, so we've got 20, 21, and 22, so we've got three episodes left. I'm very excited for the Red Daughter stuff. And this episode had none of that, and I thought this episode got better as it went on. I thought it was very good by the end when we got the speech, the interview with Dreamer. I loved all that stuff, but it started slow, and overall it was kind of a bit of a filler episode. I hate using that, but nothing massive went on. Nothing really too interesting went on throughout the episode, but like I said, it got much better towards the end of the episode. But I didn't have like a massive problem with it. I just thought it was mainly fine for most of the episode. Alright, so let's go ahead and break this down. So this was David Herwood's directorial debut. I think it was a good experience. I think he had a good time doing it, and I think he did a fine job. Like I said, I think this episode is just mainly fine, maybe tipping towards... Actually, I would say pretty good. It was a pretty good episode. It wasn't... It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad. Compared to, say, Daniel Panabaker's directorial debut a few episodes ago on The Flash with Godspeed, that was an amazing debut, directorial debut. But I just don't think David was given the best episode, like, in terms of the writing and so on and so forth. But, yeah, I'm not trying to shit on this episode because, like I said, I thought it was pretty good and definitely built up when we got to the ending. Alright, so Nia, at the start of the episode, is seen. She's been a hero. And she really gets to shine later in the episode, but like I said, at the start, she has that cool scene. Then they have this scene in the bar that has some really cool music. It builds up for something really good, but then it's very anticlimactic and nothing really happens. But by the end of the episode, oh my god, I love that interview scene. Let's quickly talk about that right now. So, Kara sits down with Dreamer for this interview and... It was so inspiring. I really, really got touched by that scene nearer to the end. And you could see all of the aliens. And obviously we had that one reaction shot with them all clapping and stuff. But just focusing on the interview, it was just a really, really nice way to sort of cap off what they were going for in this episode. And then we had that amazing scene with Katko actually being invaded by the Children of Liberty. Well, not the Children of Liberty but, you know, a segment of them that have been deputized, and they head to there, and Kara and Dreamer stick around, the lights go off, Alex helps them, and they beat the shit out of them, and oh my god, that was such an amazing scene, that was really the best scene in the episode, that's what it built up to, and it was truly satisfying to have a scene, an action scene that was actually really good, I thought last episode did a really good job with the action scenes, and this just showed you know, I think they're stepping up the hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes because, again, no Supergirl in this episode, but it they all really shined in that scene, and I, I really enjoyed that. So, like I said, not trying to poo-poo on this episode because I had some moments that I really liked. All right, so let's go back. So, at the start of the episode, we see Kara being a reporter because Supergirl's still laying low, and, you know, that's fine. And I think that's maybe part of the reason why the episode felt a bit sort of stale at the start because there wasn't too much going on. The bits that I liked was mainly Kara doing her reporting because that was the most interesting thing. So you see like this sped up Kara like doing a mind map and it's all in the Katko walls and yeah it was just a really nice scene. I really liked that and it sort of reminded me of say Barry Allen from you know earlier on in the seasons with him sort of like figuring out who killed his mum. So Obviously the reverse flash, but yeah, amazing scene. I love that scene. And so the hunt for Supergirl continues as it says on the TV prior in the episode. And we get all this stuff with James and James's powers. So with Lena, Brainy, Kelly and Alex early in the episode and it continues on to the end. They go into his mind palace. I thought it was a very interesting idea. I thought the idea worked. And so you see the Daily Planet at the time, and James is struggling to overcome his sort of memories of his father's funeral. And it turns out, as it's revealed later in the episode, that he was actually locked in a coffin, I believe, or he was locked away. And so he believes he was there, but that was because of his memories being 
sort of blocked up and he's able to recover and actually use his powers in a weird way because he has heat vision that's kind of crazy but I think by the end of the season the horror now will be out of him because I don't know if I want to see James as a sort of super girl type figure because he basically as we saw in this episode has the same powers so I don't know if it gets overcrowded or not but I think for now keeping his powers that's fine that's good but yeah I thought it was pretty good in the episode to do with James and so we see the Children of Liberty still being a bit annoying in parts of the episode but then the bit I liked in the episode was George George Lockwood and he showed signs that he had empathy for these aliens and he's obviously very into the organization and what happens at the end of the episode with the alien that we saw prior actually killing supposedly L Lydia Lockwood who is obviously Ben Lockwood's wife I think Ben Lockwood's going to go off the tail off the sort of end and I think George is going to be that person that stops the children of liberty and we've seen that in a press conference scene that they were shooting for the finale so it's all leading up to that and at least they're sort of figuring out how they're going to end this story because like I said I think it's a little bit stale right now and it has been for you know a lot of the back half of the season because they've dragged it on so long and there's nothing too interesting about the Children of Liberty at all really and I think Asian Liberty started off really well he's just been dragged on way too long and I think a lot of you agree with me on that and so, again, no Red Daughter. That's a real shame. You know, it's kind of worrying. I know there's the Red Daughter episode coming up soon. We had the finale. We saw Melissa shooting in it. But, man, she's been in, like, two episodes so far properly. She was there destroying the White House a few episodes ago. She had that amazing, the best episode of the season so far, her origin story. But she was nowhere to be seen, and I know she's going to come up next episode in the Kaznir episode, and then she has her big episode, then the finale, but, like, five episodes? That is not enough for a main villain. I know Lex is supposed to be the overarching person. He's not even here. I just think it's a shame that they're sort of focusing on the Children of Liberty more so, because no one's interested in that really anymore. It's just boring. So, yeah, I think that's part of the reason why this episode felt like filler and I'm putting that in quotation marks because I hate using that word but I wouldn't say it's fully because a lot of the story to do with Kara and her reporting obviously links into Lex and Red Daughter so that was actually the most interesting part and you know that's why I'm invested in I'm invested in the Lex and Red Daughter stuff so I want to see more of that and so you see Kara's Amatech investigations and by the end of the episode they find out using the pseudonym well Lex is using a pseudonym and they find out he's in Kaznia and they find out about what Lex has been doing essentially and that is where the paper trail has led them and they're going to go to Kaznia next episode and presumably find out a bit to do with Red Daughter and who this impersonator is maybe that she is from Kaznia maybe it's getting revealed to them that she's you know made by Haranel not sure if they will but yeah, looking forward to that. So we get this Alex and Kelly Olsen scene in the episode. I thought this episode, like I said, I, I didn't really like those scenes because I felt Kelly's lines and a few of Alex's lines were so poorly scripted. I was literally guessing what they were going to say. It was just a lot of cliche lines. I loved their moment last episode, so I'm holding on hope that this episode was just written in not such a good way that the past few episodes have been since the Red Daughter episode because I thought those had no problems barely at all with writing and it just seems like there was a lot of cliche lines coming out of some of the characters mouths especially Kelly in this episode which is a shame but I have no doubt she's going to be really really good as we head towards the end of this season and obviously into next season and like I said last video last review I really dug that scene last week with Kelly and Alex so yeah I'm looking forward to it but wasn't a big fan of some of their scenes due to the dialogue not due to the performances all right so we have Kara and Lena and for some reason Lena's mad at Kara for very little reason that was a bit annoying as well because I just felt like she was 
taken out on Kara for the sake of it, and I don't think there was any true reasoning behind it, but maybe that's just me. Not sure about that, but you see Nia versus the Children of Liberty, like I said, there was that fight scene with the cool music, and it was a little anticlimactic because she just, you know, beat them straight away and they didn't even put up a fight, they ran away. Yeah, I thought that scene could have been really cool with the music and everything, but I, I think it was a bit anticlimactic, and like I said, we go to the end and we have that Nia and Kara interview, that was, like I said, Probably my favourite moment of the episode, along with the massive fight scene at Catco. So, yeah, I was very impressed by that. And so, Jean is not to be seen again for most of the episode until the very end. He's on Mars, and he's put away the information that his father told him to actually store. So, he's done that. But I find it a bit weird that none of the characters have even talked about or noticed that jean has been away for a few episodes. So, it's a bit weird. But obviously we know the behind the scenes reason because David was directing this episode and he was obviously prepping during the filming of the episode before. But yeah, a bit weird that they didn't actually reveal any of that. But in regards to the interview scene, I just thought it was so human and so relatable with her talking about, oh, I'm House Stark, I'm a Gryffindor, which I am as well. And it was just really, really touching, that scene with Nia. And I definitely thought she was a highlight in this episode as it went on like I said wasn't a big fan at the start with what they were doing with Nia but then it got better and better and you know the culmination of that fight scene and the interview scene was just amazing and then we will just go to the final scene of the episode and this is when we see that alien like I mentioned before and she has stabbed Lydia Lockwood Ben Lockwood's wife in the chest Seems like she's dead, so that was a WTF death, I wasn't actually expecting that at all, but, you know, she kind of had it coming, really, because, you know, they're killing all these aliens, taking them away, surely at one point someone's going to come back for you, now we don't have Manchester Black anymore, so, yeah, kind of fitting, kind of feel bad for her at the same time, but then, also, she was talking to George, her son, saying like, oh, these roaches deserve this earlier in the episode, and, you know, it's a little bit satisfying, although that sounds kind of sadistic, seeing that a person's nearly dead in the TV show, so, I don't know. It seems like she's dead, or she's going to go to the hospital, that's going to sort of power Ben Lockwood on throughout the rest of the season, and I think he's going to die sometime nearer towards the end. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe, turn on notifications to not miss any videos. Follow me on Twitter at the DC TV Show and Instagram as well at the DC TV Show to stay up to date with me. Just before we go, I'm going to be going to some conventions very soon in the next few weeks. I'm going to be going to the Ultimates in Birmingham and guess who's going to be there? Kyla Lee, Odette Annabelle who play Rain, Floriana Lima. All of them are going to be there. I'm going to be there. So if you are around and you can book tickets to go, it's in England, it's in Birmingham. I'm going to be there, so be sure to say hi. Also, I'm going to be at Heroes and Villains Fan Fest London in the week after, I actually do believe. So, you know, a very short period of time, but that's in London. We have so many guests coming, and I'm so excited. Tom Kavanagh is going to be there, among tons of other people. So, yeah, be sure to say hi if you see me at any of those events. Get booking your tickets right now. They are so fun and you'll get to meet the stars and just have a great time. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.